Okay, first and foremost, this is not the video I promised when I re-ran the Training the Abuse Beginner series. That was just gonna be a lot of ranting and raving, and as much as I enjoy that, it wasn't gonna be terribly productive, so I decided to ditch it. Um, today, what I wanna talk about is a question that does come up quite frequently, usually among more general fitness folks who are doing a good bit of weight training, getting stronger, bigger, but then decide that for some variety, they want to do an endurance event. Typically, that's a marathon, half marathon, uh, if they're more into bicycling, they might uh, ride a century, which is 100 miles. Lately, there seems to be more interest in things like Tough Mudder, things of that nature. Um, the point being that since they're not concerned with maximizing their bodybuilding or strength training, they want to go do something very heavily endurance-oriented. And what they want to know is what's the best way to keep their gains in the weight room while they do that. Um, I'm mainly going to focus on that. What I'm going to talk about really isn't about weight training for endurance athletes, although a lot of what I'm going to say is fairly... Uh, similar to the recommendations I'd make there. Now, there's a lot of beginner marathon and century programs online. I've linked out to some of them in the text uh, underneath this video. Um, Hal Higdon, Jeff Galloway are some of the big running coaches. Um, there's a variety of century approaches. They all tend to take the same basic approach, which is you see three shorter workouts during the week and then one very long workout on the weekend. Um, for running, typically three shorter runs during the week, that one long run on Saturday. For cycling, you often see a little bit higher frequency just because it doesn't beat you up so badly. But I'm going to kind of work from that template. Um, during the week, the runs might be three, four, five miles tops. Um, Wednesday, you might see a little bit longer run, kind of a medium distance. Or some programs will have some quality work. By quality work, we're not talking about full sprints. It might be mile repeats, a little bit faster than race pace. Um, some people just keep it slow and, and a little bit higher volume. Um, the Saturday workout, again, is the long run, and that's really where the, the energy is supposed to go. Running programs start with five or six miles and might build up to 20 miles by three weeks out. So about 80% of that total distance that they're going to finish in the marathon. Century programs look basically the same. Uh, the workout's are a little bit longer since cycling workouts tend to be about twice as long. So you might see an hour bike ride during a few times a week. Uh, some people recommend like a harder ride on that Wednesday. And then again, you've got a long bike ride on Saturday. It might start at 35 miles and add five miles a week so that you're doing 75 to 80 miles by a couple weeks out from the, the event. Every once in a while, you will see a program that recommends working the full race distance in training. Kind of defeats the purpose. Most people want to do the marathon, do the century to get the t-shirt, get the medal, and accomplish the distance in an event. So doing it in training really isn't that useful. So I've shown that basic approach in the picture that's going to show up on the screen here. Again, you can see the three is your workouts during the week. The one long workout on that Saturday or Sunday so it depends on what day of the weekend is better for you. Okay, so with that in mind, let's talk about where to put weight training. The big issues with weight training, uh, of course, the first one is people want to maintain their size and their strength gains. Whether or not that's realistic against this volume of training is debatable, but done properly, you can maintain uh, certainly most of what you gain without a whole lot of losses. Another issue is you have to be real careful with where you program the weight training so as not to interfere with the training itself. Again, that long workout on Saturday is really the big one. You don't want to go into that tired. That's the key workout for all these programs. The Wednesday workout, whether it's a little bit longer or a little bit harder, is another key workout. So since running and cycling are both beating up on your legs, you really want, do not want to put weight training before those, either of those days. Coming into those fatigues is a real danger. Uh, running on tired legs is also a really good way to get hurt. So what my typical recommendation is, number one, to cut weights to back to twice a week. When you're trying to do a high volume of endurance training, there's just not room or recovery for much more than that. And with that, I would recommend two full body workouts. Typically, I would actually recommend doubling up on the harder days. So do one full body workout on Wednesday after the longer run or the quality run or the longer bike ride, and then the other weight workout on Saturday after the long ride, the key being after. This assumes that your schedule will allow it. I know not everyone has that kind of flexibility, but that would be kind of the ideal. This way, it does make for two really hard days. You've got that longer run on Wednesday or the harder run slash bike ride plus weights, and then Saturday is just a hellish day. But it the, gives you the most recovery for your legs given the other training. Since you also get Sunday off, Monday off, 
you get the most recovery from Saturday. Mind you, not everybody likes full body routines. Um, they kind of come in and out of vogue. I'm a big fan of them. Not everybody likes them. You can do a basic split routine. Again, the key is to really be careful not to do heavy leg work before either of the important biker bike rides or running workouts. So I've shown another split, sort of a basic upper lower split routine. Um, again, with the lower body days falling on those heavier uh, run or bike days and then the upper body days kind of scheduled separately. So those are kind of the two basic options. You can do two full body workouts, uh, hopefully after uh, your heavier running or cycling days, or you can do a basic upper lower split routine if you've got the recovery, if your schedule will allow it. That just depends on you. Before I move on, let's talk a little bit about programming. The key thing to maintain uh, both strength and size gains here is you're going to want to cut the volume of your weight training workouts, but maintain the intensity. And by intensity here, I really mean weight on the bar. I'm not talking about percentages of one rep maximum. Effort, yes and no. The key thing is really to keep the weight on the bar as similar as humanly possible to what you were using beforehand. The rule of thumb that's been shown in research to be true and empirically anecdotally is that you can cut your volume pretty heavily, about to about two thirds, um, as long as you maintain intensity, again, weight on the bar. So if you were doing five sets of five, you can cut back to two sets of five. If you were doing four sets of 10, you can cut back to two sets of 10. You get the idea. That will really be ideal for most people. You can go a couple warm up sets, a couple heavy sets, and then be done. Um, for lower body, keep it simple. One compound exercise, quads, one leg crawl exercise, or hamstrings, maybe a secondary exercise, a little bit of upper body, get out of the gym. You can make full body workouts different, so one day is more quad emphasis, one day is more hamstring emphasis. You know the drill on this. Again, cut the volume, keep the intensity high. Same thing goes for the upper lower, is just cut your volume on everything. The upper body is involved in both running and cycling, so if you wreck your upper body in the weight room, you're going to have a bad time on the harder run or bike workouts. One other thing, and this is really more for that full body option, but can also go for the, the split routine, is you may even find that you have to do a heavy light type of routine or a heavy and a speed day. So you might do your heavier workout on a Wednesday uh, after that, that harder, medium, uh, faster bike ride. So you won't be too wrecked, go into the weight room, that's really the, the time to, to keep it heavy. And then on Saturday, you're going to be wrecked. If you go ride for 50 or 60 miles on the bike or running for 15, 20 miles, your legs are going to be tired. Go in, do a power workout, about 80% of the weight you used on Wednesday on the full body, on the heavy day. Uh, keep it short, get out of the gym. Um, I would also mention that on Saturday, after you do that long ride, long run, you're going to need to do some post-workout nutrition if you're going to have any chance of doing anything in the weight room. It's also ideal if you can put about four to six hours between the workouts. Your schedule may not allow it, but that's kind of an ideal. So that's sort of an overall look at how you might best sort of combine weight training with these types of endurance training goals. Do know, even if you lose a little bit of strength, a little bit of size, as soon as you cut back that training volume in, on the endurance stuff and get back to it in the weight room, muscle memory is real and it'll come back pretty quickly. So you can read the transcript on this and uh, get some links to some programs if you're interested to some different marathon and century programs. And the graphics are there too at www.bodyrecomposition.com.